Welcome to Power Women of the Trades podcast. This show is all about breaking barriers and changing the game. Our guests will feature some of today's most successful female entrepreneurs and other advocates of our industry as well. Because if there's one thing we know for sure, female-led entrepreneurship drives change on multiple levels. We want to empower women in the trade industry like you so you can maximize your potential, stay balanced, achieve long-term success, and claim ownership over your life. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Leslie and Cassie here with Power Women of the Trades podcast, and I am personally so excited about today's guest, Adi Clevett, and I'm going to bring her in and let her talk about herself. Hey, Adi. Hey, Leslie. Cassie, so good to have you, to be on your podcast. First of all, I want to congratulate you on this podcast. It's amazing. And the concept, what, what you're creating here, I just love it. So thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So now you want me to tell you a little bit about myself? Yeah. Tell us all about, so you, we have actually used you at Champion in the past for creating processes, procedures, SOPs, all the things, creating a playbook for our business. So I want you to tell us why is that important? How does it create more efficiency and less stress on the owner and the employees? Absolutely. So, you know, my background is industrial engineering. That's what I, that's what my profession is, right? So I'm all about increasing productivity, efficiency, et cetera. And I founded this company, Business Success Consulting Group, about 12 years ago, because I realized that small to medium-sized businesses also need systems and they need processes and they need procedures that, you know, big companies definitely have the advantage of having it, but it's also you, it also applies to small to medium sized businesses and we work with many businesses many many trade businesses because of the importance of having those systems so they can actually grow and scale and you are you and champion is a perfect example of it right when we start when we connected about 2 years ago it was no systems right i mean you were faced with oh we have to continue running the business but it's all in yours and brand's head and how do we actually do that? How do we actually impart that knowledge to others? And how do we make sure that things are actually being done in an efficient way? And that's where systems and processes and procedures come into place. Well, right. And I think what was so, well, to, to be fair, when we first started, we didn't think having any of those things were really important, right? And it was when we started growing and growing we realized we were kind of adding fuel to the fire, so to speak. And But the thought of actually having to sit down and type out and create all of this was so overwhelming for my brain. Mm -hmm. So I would like for you to walk us through the process of how basically what you did for us. I think that's the best example is we had a conversation and then we met you put it all into sweet process for us, kind of what that looks like if someone wanted to do this, what would it look like for them? Well, and too, like, I think, sorry, I don't want to go backwards, but I'm already like thinking because it's my first time to meet you. And so I'm already thinking how processes have just in my own business have, have helped. And like, with everything, with my relationship with my husband, with my relationship with my team, Honestly, employees want structure. I think it's helped with retention in our in our staffing because people want structure and even if they push back at first, right? Sure. And so so I think that Absolutely. To me, I'm excited to hear. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to learn and all from And feel me. free to use our dirty information as your example because I think a lot of people listening are going to it's going to resonate with them right especially oh, I, I, we know right. a lot of oh, our, absolutely oh, absolutely I agree I mean you know if you even want me to share my screen I'll be happy to share what we have done so people can see so it's up to you I don't know if you that would be visible in the yeah. in the end yeah. No, I don't think it would be visible later. I don't think anyone would be right. able to see it. Okay, so let me answer your question. Let me ask, answer both of your questions. So first of all, yes, I agree. Having systems in place basically puts order into the business, right? So when you first get started, 
my advice, like people ask me all the time, when is the right time to put systems in? So I say, you know, if you're a startup with funding and have a lot of money to use, you can build the systems to begin from the get-go. But majority of the, especially people in the trades, I mean, how do you get started? You get your first few jobs, then you hire another person, then you hire a helper and you get going. And then all of a sudden you grow your business. You are, you have several millions in revenue and you go, okay, I'm growing. I need to hire more people. I need to scale. I want to maybe sell. I want to maybe franchise it. I want to open another location, whatever it is. And you go, okay, how do I do that? Right? So my advice is that is the point just before that, that's the point to actually systematize the business. When you just get started, you need customers. You need customers, you need marketing, and you need to get customers. And I know Leslie's business very well, and I know that she's done a superb job with the marketing, like, you know, in terms of like making sure the phones are ringing all the time. And that is the most important thing. You want to get leads in, 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 and service as many customers as you can. Then what happens is that you are getting all these influx of uh, leads and customers. You need to organize so you can actually service them so you can do it in the most efficient way and profitable way, right? Because you don't want to just keep adding people, like admin people, right? You want to make sure that you, your office manager and any dispatch, or any people who work in the office are very are super efficient handling what is coming in and that your technicians are very well trained. So then the cycle continues where you're getting referrals. Maybe you can spend a little bit less on the marketing in terms of making it more organic, et cetera. So that's the point, really, and that's the point where I met Leslie is let's organize it. Let's create systems in place, right? And the way that you do it is you basically identify all the areas in your business, that all the areas that exist in the business. So that will be your marketing, your sales, your technicians, your operations, right? Your leadership, your, H, your hiring, so your HR, et cetera. And then you decide which area if you had well-documented processes and procedures, will get you the biggest return on investment. So we identified that we really needed the area for the technicians to be documented because you were hiring more, right? So the dispatch and technicians have to be very well-documented. But we also didn't want to make it an overkill, right? We didn't want to go into all the minutia. We didn't want to have like a manual with you know, a hundred pages in it. We wanted to have it in such a way that people can access it on their iPads, right? On their mobile devices. It's a checklist that they know what to do. How do you start a job? What do you do when you get to a job? How do you bid the job? You know, and it's make sure that they sign that they actually, you know, that you get the authorization. How do you present yourself to the customer? How do you ask for a review? How do you ask for referrals? You know, all of that, we basically standardize it. So there is one way, according to whatever, you know, Leslie, you and Brent decided, this is the way we want. This is the way we want every single job to start, right? This is the way we want every single job to end. This is what we tell the customer. This is what we present to them. So when you have that systematized like that and you get the technicians to actually read it and be able to pull it on their iPads and go over it, then you achieve uniformity, consistency, and you get great customer service because everyone is doing the same. Yes, exactly what you're saying. And I want to go back to... What was so helpful to me about bringing you in at that time is because my brain knew all of this, right? All the information was in my brain. Even now, all the information runs through my brain. But the great part of using someone like you is there can be a disconnect between what you know and what action gets taken. And so every time, you know, we when we brought you in and we were working with you, we knew we were meeting at this time every week or you were meeting with leadership and creating these processes. So I didn't have to turn that over in my head constantly. And we were constantly moving the needle on getting this stuff done because taking on SOPs is a process. I mean, Mm -hmm. it isn't just, oh, I'm going to write a few things down that I have in my head. I mean, you really have no idea what you're getting into until you realize every, you know, they say you should have a process for turning on the lights in your building or whatever. And so what was so helpful to me and Brent, because we're not really integrators, obviously you know that about us, is that 
using you, it was all getting done and we didn't have to think about it anymore, Mm -hmm. right? We found someone who this was their gift. I think it's important to be able to bring in people who can use their gifts. This was getting done and we didn't even have to turn it over in our brains anymore. Well, and I think like just thinking like you're saying, not being good integrators, we there is so many things as owners and managers in our businesses that we're running that we do but we don't know that we're doing it. Or and if you had to set me down and say, what do you do? People ask me that all the time. So what is your role in the business? I'm like, LOL, what? I know, right. All of it. So many But hats. I don't. Or when something breaks, when a process that I know we have breaks, and then I think, well, why didn't we do that? Because that's we, we know what we're supposed to do, but we don't. Do we have it wrote down anywhere besides the one time we trained it out a few times? And so to me, like, I am very in, intrigued about, about this specifically because, you know, we talked too about we're Nextstar members and Nextstar gives us a lot of those things, but there's still things you have to put into your, take those pieces and put into your business. Right. So, and I will say it works with a lot of Nextstar companies because they are such an incredible resource. We talk about, um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel We know what works, but there's a knowing and then there's an action that has to implementation that has to happen. And some things you tweak, right? Like we knew some things we wanted to tweak this for champion. You know, for us, it was just such a great experience because it was sitting on the back of my mind for so long that we needed to do this, but I couldn't figure out when was I going to sit down and find the time. And I had no desire. Mm -hmm. To sit me down and take things out of my brain, I don't want to do that. No, it sounds scary. It sounds stressful. It is stressful. But (laughs) what a D does is she sits you down and she talks, and you don't have to write anything. It's all through video. She takes the notes. She implements it. She creates all of it in sweet process for you. And then as you get through it, you can tweak things, right? And that's the easy part is going back and tweaking something. It's the initial foundation that you're setting up that's essentially the blueprint for your business. So doing this, Adi, like what do you, for especially for the people listening, like what do you feel is the number one benefit for the owner or maybe the manager or the owner who's working with their spouse, for example? What is the benefit of... Yeah, so, you know, the benefit... There are two there are two questions here. Like what's the benefit for the owner and what's the benefit of work to the owner that is working with their spouse? So there are I think I mean it benefits both of them that you actually you are able to extract yourself out of the business, right? And like what working with Leslie and Brent, you know, they were able to take vacations, right? I mean, their family and their, it's very important to them. It's very important to them to be able to travel. It's very important to, to be able to actually get themselves out of the business and disconnect, not necessarily being all the time connected to the business. So if you actually have the systems in place, you can have somebody running the operations. You can have somebody running the business. I mean, as an office manager or administrator, you can have the dispatching crew knowing what they're doing. So that's, it gives the freedom to actually extract the owner out of the business and make the business independent of the owner, which is very, very important, especially if you want to sell in the future, if you're preparing the business for sale, if you don't want to be a slave to the business, that's very important. So that's the main benefit is basically. Yeah. And we, as, as owners, I think sometimes we are, we need to hear that for exactly what you're saying because we don't we think if we're not in the business we're not needed and then what am I, what was the point and what is this but like that's actually a part of success that's actually saying i've made it and i've i've created a sustainable business when you can leave and the and the ship continues to operate if the ship is only operating because you're standing there you're just you've just created a major problem for yourself, right? It's just an expensive hobby. At it that is point. an expensive hobby. That's ex- that I love it. So having or you a high so, paid employee, have, you know, that's what you you have a boss and the boss is a business, right? So you're kind of like maybe high paid, hopefully employee, but you're not really you don't get the freedom that you want as a business owner. You know, a few years ago we did a survey and we asked business owner the business owners the first question we asked was what do you like most about being a business owner? 
do you know what the number one answer was? Like it was like a hundred surveys and it was not from the same companies, different business owners. Do you know what the number one answer was? Being your own boss. The word was freedom. It kept coming up. Like I asked, what do you like most about being a business owner? Freedom. But then the second question was, what frustrates you most about being a business owner? And then they start talking about personnel, about not being about being tied down to the business, about not being able to have, enjoy that freedom. So that is really what people want. That's why you start your own business so you can have your freedom. And I think that's <laughs> what those... Yeah, most of the business owners that we know and the business owners in our space and the people listening... I am willing to bet the largest portion of us is that's exactly what we're not doing. We're not free. We are very much tied to the business all the time. And, you know, we always joke with we wanted to start this business so we could work 24-7 because that's <laughs> what we do. That's what we do. And I come from a background. I come from a retail background. I've talked a lot about I worked at Best Buy for eight years and a lot of my training and management at Best Buy result like was around processes. So I'm very SOP process driven and I tried to create those in my own company, but I've not always had the best. I didn't have someone like you to say, no, this is right or this is wrong. I still, there's a lot of times that I pull things up from previous companies that I worked for or from Best Buy and I'll say something and someone who used to work with me there, they're like, that was from Best Buy. But but it's in inside of me because I thrive off of structure and I want that structure and I want to put that structure in my own company. And having the structure, I, you know, again, we're not anywhere near the awesome things that you're talking about. And so I'm really excited to have you help us now. But even just the things we've learned with Nextstar, the the structure that we've gotten from there. I think that I'm I don't always give that the credit of, right. you know, it just dawned on me again, like I said earlier. Our retention has been better at quality since we've implemented those things because people want to know that they have, my team does not have to worry if there's going to be jobs on the board because every morning they see that call center team come in and sit down and they know that they're expected to have this many outbound calls and they're making sure that they're doing these steps. And so before I would lose people in the winter because they were worried if they would have jobs, but I created unconsciously write that system, but I don't have it on paper. What if I, what if I, well, and I think the important part is you're the owner for a reason because intuitively there are things that you know, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way that God made you. I think what's great about that's a gift in and of itself. It, when you bring in a third party, you've got a completely different set of eyes looking at your business who can be really objective and truthful. Adi had to be really brutally honest with me at times. And to me, that was a gift because there were times when she, when I would, honestly, I was probably venting to her and I'd say, I keep running into this and I keep running into this. And she said, Leslie, that has to do with you. That has to do with your leadership. And I think the importance, like we, I don't know that you could sit down and write an SOP for your business and not put part of yourself into it. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to see it through your filter. And so I think that's what's so great or at least was so great for us. And something I really want to touch on because it's so personal to me and you were involved and still are involved is, you know, we both work with our husbands, right? We're both gifted in different areas. We both have different strengths. And so one of the main stressors as a husband and wife team is how does the business impact your family and your marriage? And so Adi, I would love for you to touch on how, because you had told me at one point in the past, you kind of mediated between two business partners, not married, just two business partners who weren't even speaking anymore. And how, what did you learn from that? And then what were some things that you applied to Brent and I that were helpful? Absolutely. And that actually answers the question from before in terms of, I touched on how the systems are helpful for the business owner, but now how did help business owners that are partners or marriage, you know, they're married to each other. So what we did is we created a communication system because honestly, what was missing is the communication, right? Is the agreement because it was all a confusion. 
you know, the business was brought in, into the home, into the dinner table, into the vacations, into the time together, and constantly talking about the business, right? And even when talking about the business, it wasn't structured. So that leads to disagreements. It can lead to fights. It can lead to just ruining your entire weekend, your entire evening, because you keep talking about it, right? So what we did is we created a structure. We use a project management system to communicate. Basically, that it was a way for, for Brent and Leslie, as an example, to communicate with each other about things in the business. So we established a leadership meeting. So every, let's say, it was started with Friday morning, and I was there with them, and we created a specific agenda. And I had to say, okay, Leslie, let Brent talk. Brent, let Leslie talk, right? So we really drill that as if the author just, you know, just like you're doing every leadership meeting, like every executive meeting. And we have specific items on the agenda. And we had a way to communicate back and forth throughout that system. And if, let's say, Brent thought about something throughout the week, he will put it there. Leslie thought about something throughout the week, he will put it there. And they will, and I coach them on answering each other without the emotions, without just like as business partners would do, right? Or as people working in the business as part of the leadership team would do. So we created that system. And then Leslie was able to communicate like that also to people in the business. Instead of texting, you know, you know, we're basically consolidating. Instead of texting, calling, email, you know, on different communication lines, we really consolidated those communication lines that it is in one place and that is what we use. And then Leslie hired a marketing consultant and she used the same lines of communication with the marketing consultant. The marketing consultant was genius. She wrote everything in that system. You know, all the steps that need to be done. Leslie responded to it, did the tasks. Then you hire a marketing assistant who also was brought in and she was able to see what was done. It was just created that sense of order. That is the main thing. It was orderly done. And instead of something that would take a week to do and sort out throughout what that person is saying, what that person is doing, it basically in a matter of hours, you are able to hand it to somebody else because they can see what needs to be done. And the communication is very controlled, very professional. And you get things done as opposed to, you know, discussing and putting emotions into it and blame and all of that. No, it's just very, very professional, very to the point and very organized. Well, and I think what was so helpful to me, and I can't speak to others, I know a lot of females like me. I mean, something that I really deal with on a daily basis is how do my emotions affect the decisions I'm making in my business, the conversations I'm having. So what was so important to me in creating this process, just using ClickUp, like what you're you're talking about, that was the software that we use is it it takes the emotions out of it and once you put it there mm -hmm. once you put it there whether it's a task or, or whatever that person reads it goes in and completes it and it just notifies you in green so for me it's not if i've said something and i don't get a response right away from my team i hate to say this about myself but it, it can trigger me yeah no it and does it spins in my head so i know once i put it in the software I can look, put that down, let it go, and then when I check back in later and that task has been moved to green, I know they've handled it. They don't even have to talk to me, Yeah. right? They don't even need to talk to me. I'm, they don't need to talk to Brent. I don't need to talk to Brent. I mean, it's been incredibly effective with how Brent and I deal with our goals. And now we're better. And I will say it was because of having a D sit in on – I'm not ashamed to say it. I mean, it was kind of like, you know, we go to a marriage counselor. It was almost like having a marriage counselor in our business meetings between Brent and I and learning how to talk to each other. Yeah. And well, I think that that's so like that. So I, I'm a, so I'm severely ADHD. I talk about that a lot because I feel like it's important because I, until I learned I was ADHD, I didn't know my issue, right? And a lot of people don't, especially women, don't find out that they were ADHD for a long time. So I speak about it. You'll hear me say that a lot. But my emotions, I've always been emotion driven. And I 
can I am a table flipper over not truly but I always you know I always take myself into that scene in the Bible where they say Jesus walked in and flipped the table over and I'm always like I was I don't thinking think... of the scene from the Real Housewives of New Jersey when Teresa flipped the table over <laughs> so let's be more real about okay. which table because Jesus and sometimes when I use my <laughs> Jesus analogy on that I'm always like but he was probably, he was way better in that scenario than me, but I'm emotionally driven and I am that way. Like, oh, I sent you a message in Teams and you didn't even acknowledge it. it that pisses me off. It pisses me off because I'm like, so you just, you didn't care. So, but. You didn't what, respect me. You didn't care. You didn't you know, respect. It's, 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 you know, but you know, but you're both right about it. I mean, the thing, like it happens to me too, you know, but that's why, like for instance, in my company, I have a policy and I just onboarded today a new employee and I went over it with her in terms of like, I actually say, it says like, you know, this is how we send emails to each other. This is how we send messages in Teams or in Slack. This is what I'm expected that you will acknowledge that, that you even put an emoji like th thumbs up or smile or heart or whatever it is. But I know that you heard that I'm heard. So I think it's very, very important to do that, but it's getting the agreements in writing ahead of time and training everybody on it so everybody will comply, right? And making sure mm -hmm. that people comply with it. You can't have expectations if you don't set expectations. And uh, what I was saying, you know, being so ADHD, I write my notes down as I'm talking to you so I can come back. But I wrote processes create freedom, but also processes are facts, right? Or at least the facts for the moment. And so we get so caught up in, well, being, in, being emotionally driven, but what are the facts? Tell and me the fa facts. And facts don't care about feelings. Facts don't care about feelings. Num you know, we say that about numbers. Numbers don't lie, right? Facts, processes don't lie if that's the process right now. Now, can processes change? Absolutely. But if I have, if, if you're upset with me, how many times can we all think, you know, in our businesses where we have had to write someone up or hold them accountable to something and they're like, well, you've told me three other different ways, but it's like, well, no, I've told you this way. And that's a fact. But do they know it was a fact? When was the last time you told them that way or what? You know, so I think about there's so many things in my mind just playing here of how important this is. And especially something I've always said is when we all started these businesses, 99.9% .9 of trade businesses started with someone with a dream and someone who had experience in the trade. And they had experience being a plumber, an HVAC te a technician, or a electrician. They didn't go to business school. None of nope. us went to business school. And so we've just been like out here winging it and we're winging it without a playbook and your processes are your playbook. Mm -hmm. Who wants a playbook? We all do. Let's get back in. We were talking about processes and facts don't care about feelings and all those things. And, you know, Cassie mentioned she's ADHD. You already knew that about me. I think that's something we haven't really touched on enough, how we being neurodivergent, how we process like and a business owner, mm -hmm. how there is so much chaos in our brains. There's such a gift to being the way that we are. But also these processes take a lot of the chaos out of what's happening in our brain and help us grow because I can literally have be talking to you right now and be going through my grocery list and also what I want to talk about later with Brent and still be solid in the conversation. Still with be you. solid in the conversation. Yeah. But what, what has been so effective with me is and touching back to why we started doing this is we had women reach out to us. A lot of us are suffering with this, right? And how something so small as using a task management software and getting and being disciplined enough to check it in the morning and at night, brain dump all of that stuff creates freedom. Mm -hmm. I mean, really going back to that, of course, like ideally, yes, you're having freedom, but you're also growing your business. So I, w I mean, when I originally introduced, I think, a D2 was in our Lady Titans group, it was about how her processes helped me with my ADHD and it gave me clarity clarity and, and purpose. Like it gave me a driving 
well, gave me direction. And I, I guess. think about like how many times I've said I've made a process and I've it's in my head and then I never told anyone the process. And then you and then you're like, well, why aren't you do- yes. <laughs> yes. Why aren't you doing the process? And they're like, we've never heard about and that it's in our so life. Genius. <laughs> it was such a good idea. It was a great idea. Well, Adi, we really have enjoyed our time with you and you're so incredibly smart. I want to be respectful. Leslie and I want to be respectful yes. of your time. And drop all of your information. How do we get a hold of you? Yes. How do people How listen? How someone find you? So, okay. So you can look me up on LinkedIn. So it's Adi Klevit, A-D-I-K-L-E-V-I-T. You can check my website, which is bizsuccesscg.com. And I also have a podcast, which is called the Systems Simplified Podcast. You can find it on any podcast platform that you use. And I interview there. I talk about processes, about how to get started, what's important. I interview people that have done it, other thought leaders in that area. So it's all about processes. And yeah, so that's very easy to find me. And I am just... I've said this a million times before, you know, Adi has been such a blessing to Brent and I and anyone that wants to come and ask me personally, I can't say enough about her. She helped us unravel so many things that we needed help with in our business. Even having a good blueprint already, she just helped quiet a lot of the chaos. So we're so grateful that you took your time today to be with us. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. You are so welcome. And thank you for having me on this podcast. Thanks, Adi. Have a good rest of your day. You too. This has been Power Women of the Trades. Like what you hear so far? Leave us a review and Apple. And make sure to listen to our other episodes wherever you enjoy listening to your podcasts. Thanks for listening. And we'll catch you on the next one.